So today we have Stephen Darrow. We're so grateful he's here. He received his bachelor's degree in Latin and in communication sciences and disorders from the University of Texas at Austin. So keep Austin weird. He completed his master of science degree in speech language pathology from University of Texas at Dallas. He's worked for several years inpatient and in outpatient facilities in Dallas, Albuquerque and Austin before working exclusively with people with Parkinson's. He then launched his own project, Loud and Clear, designed to provide treatment options to people with Parkinson's disease whose needs are not currently being met. Stephen, thanks so much for joining us today. And Calissa also muted you. I'm, I'm comfortable enough doing the mute and unmute, um, if that's okay with you, Calissa. Hi, thank you very much, Eden, for, for the intro. Uh, I'm really flattered to be asked to be here. And I, I actually, I'm, I'm scrolling through and seeing uh, some familiar faces in the audience. So uh, thank you for those of you who are either in, in my Friday voice class or who use my app, who answered the call to, uh, to be on this talk today. So thank you. Go ahead and get started. Is, is the floor mine? Share your screen. The, the floor is yours if you wanna okay. share your screen with your slides. Awesome, awesome. Hold on, I do have to say hi to Marsha Miller from Plainview, New York, because that's where I'm from and nobody ever knows of Plainview. I usually have to say Syosset or Levitt Town because it's a small little town and I was very sad when I heard the diner closed. Okay, now you can, now it's on you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> awesome. Uh, no, uh, and uh, that, that's a, a perfect time to mention that I am, I'm pretty casual. Uh, Eden and Calissa are going to be acting as moderators, um, but Please let them know if you have any questions along the way. Um, I will go ahead and share screen. And if you are not seeing what I am seeing, somebody just raise a hand, let me know. Uh, and take care of that. Uh, I still see the number of participants going up. That is pretty cool, guys. Thank, thank you for uh, everybody doing that. I asked, um, I asked Eden permission to do this. Um, and I'm, I'm a little nervous, but I'm gonna start with a joke today. Okay, guys? Uh, and that's because we wanna wait for a couple of people to trickle in and because I wanna do the hardest thing that I'm gonna to do today up front, all right? Which is to tell this joke. So once upon a time, there was a man whose lifelong dream was to be a train conductor and drive trains. With hard work, perseverance, he fulfilled that lifelong dream. He got a job as a train conductor, but tragically, the very first day on the job, he crashed his passenger train, injuring all 50 people on the train. So he had to go to trial. The judge found him guilty and sentenced him to execution by electric chair. Executioner walks him down the hall, puts him in the electric chair, asks him if he wants the last meal. The man says, yes, one banana, please. So the executioner hands him a banana. The man pops it in his mouth. Executioner flips the switch. And nothing happens. They figure that technically he served his sentence. So they let him go. Um, he gets his job back. Next day, he's driving the train, crashes it again. All the passengers are injured, has to go back to trial. Same judge finds him guilty. Same executioner walks him down the hall, and sits, him, sits him down in the electric chair and says, would you like a last meal? The man says, yes, two bananas, please. So the man gets two bananas from the executioner, pops both of them in his mouth. The executioner flips the switch and nothing happens again. He tries it a couple times, still nothing. Executioner shrugs his shoulders and lets him go. I guess the train companies don't do a very good background check because this guy goes and gets another job, different train company. Next day, he's driving again. Again, crashes his passenger train. He goes back, sees the same judge, found guilty, same sentence of execution by electric chair. Executioner walks him down the hall, sits him in the electric chair and asks if he'd like a last meal. The man says, yes, three bananas, please. The executioner says, you know what? No, I'm breaking protocol today and flips the switch without giving him his last meal. And nothing happens. Executioner says, what gives? I didn't even give you the bananas this time. The man says, the bananas had nothing to do with it. I'm just a bad conductor. All right, all right, all right. And look at that. We got a few more participants. I'm looking for the number to go down just in case anybody didn't love that. All right, thanks for putting up with that, guys. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, improving your, your speech um, as it relates to Parkinson's disease. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the root cause, um, what the options are out there, 
uh, how a speech therapist fits into all that. So a little bit about me is I'm an ASHA certified speech language pathologist. That's just our governing body. Um, I'm the chairman of the Georgetown area Parkinson support group here in central Texas. I see a couple of my members on. Hi guys. Um, if you are someone that needs more resources, please check out our website. It's, it's a fantastic website, Georgetown. Well, Google Georgetown area Parkinson support group and you'll see it. I bet some of you are on here directly or indirectly because of Mary Jane. Uh, she's our ED. It, it's fantastic. I, I could go into that for a long, long time. I'm, I'm also a clinical educator at the University of St. Augustine, which is a graduate school here in South Austin uh, that trains up speech paths. I'm founder and CEO of Loud and Clear, which is a mobile app for people with Parkinson's. I'll get into a lot more of that later. I'm also married with three boys. It's my wife, me, and my three kiddos at Garden of the Gods in Colorado Springs. So as we dive in today, I want to ask, why therapy? Why do you do the therapy? What is the point specifically of, of voice or language or cognitive therapy? Okay. I am going to tell you what I think the answer is later on, but I genuinely want you to try and think why therapy? Why would you do therapy? Okay. And then we can kind of compare notes at the end. Like I said, we're going to go over voice disorders, um, voice options, and we're also going to touch on cognition, language, and swallow. Okay. Because that's all the speech language pathologist purview. And real quick, let me say two, I'll say speech language pathologist, I'll say SLP, I'll say speech therapist, I'll say speech path, interchangeably. I mean the same thing when I, when I say any of those, okay? All right, so first off, we're going to talk a little bit about voice disorders, again, as it relates to Parkinson's disease. So because we're touching on a lot of stuff today, I'm going to generalize on a couple of these concepts, okay? Um, but I, I think for our purposes, they'll, they'll serve as well. So what's happening um, with, the, with a voice disorder in Parkinson's? By definition, right, uh, loss of dopamine is what's going on with Parkinson's. And that loss of dopamine means that the neural transmission, your brain sending signal to your muscles is reduced along the way. So a lot of those muscular functions shrink. There's also a, an impairment in the sensory feedback, right? If, if I am, I without Parkinson's am talking and if, if I'm talking a little softly, I'm gonna pick up on, hey, wait, I'm talking a little softly. I need to be a little bit louder. Well, there's, there's a break in that, in that sensory feedback loop for people with Parkinson's a lot of times, which can contribute to the voice disorder, right? If you don't know that you are not speaking loudly enough or, or clearly enough, um, if it's garbled, you might not be doing anything about it. For people diagnosed with Parkinson's, somewhere between 73 and 90% of people diagnosed with Parkinson's will experience a voice, some sort of voice issue at some point in the disease progression. So that represents, you know, in, in the US, you could say roughly 750,000 to 900,000 people um, that will experience a voice disorder that have Parkinson's as little as 3% to 45% receive treatment. So um, luckily the trend is much more to receiving treatment these days. Um, it's probably because of awareness, probably because of technology uh, and probably because of, of advocacy groups. So, but still there's a large gap that remains, okay? And that's actually why I got into this space in the first place is in grad school recognizing, hey, there is a huge amount of need. And although the treatment methods that currently exist are awesome, not everybody is receiving the treatment they need for their voice. Uh, this, the symptoms for people with Parkinson's, most typically at least for their voice disorders, um, all these, well, most of these fall under the umbrella of hypokinetic dysarthria. So hypo just means under, kinetic movement, under movement, uh, dysarthria, which dysarthria is um, a, a speech disorder and there's a number of dysarthrias, but specifically what we're looking at here is decreased volume. So somebody might come across a lot softer than what they're used to coming across. Um, they might have slurred articulation. So if you think about it, how much work your tongue is doing when you're speaking, well, if you shrunk those movements, all of a sudden your tongue, your lips, they're not hitting the places they're supposed to or not as rigorously. And so you might get a little bit of slurred speech where the 
words aren't being pronounced as clearly as they could be. Might also have an inadequate breath support. So breath is really where your voice starts. It's the fuel of your voice, right? You take a deep breath, that air flows through, passes by your vocal cords to get, get some noise, and then it gets shaped by your, your velum, your tongue, your te teeth, your cheeks, your lips. Um, but if you don't have an adequate breath support, right, because of that decreased movement, you're not gonna be able to, you're gonna find yourself running out of breath a lot as you're talking. You might experience flat prosody. So prosody, prosody is a little bit of a speechy term that's really just kind of the melody or the almost the personality of your voice, right? So for instance, if you told me that you were expecting a baby, I'd say, oh my goodness, I'm so excited to hear that. Um, or if you told me that um, your dad's in the hospital, like, oh no, well, tell me, how can I help, right? I'm communicating a lot there, not just with the words I'm saying, but more with how I'm saying it. But if I have Parkinson's, sometimes one of the things that can be robbed is that no matter if I'm excited or upset or whatever, my voice is coming across pretty flatlined, right? I'm not communicating very much right now with the intonation in my voice. Kind of a parallel to that is, a, is facial masking. I, I think most of you are familiar with this term. Facial masking is the visual equivalent of what I just described, where, you know, if I was really excited for you, my eyebrows would go up, uh, you'd see my, my, my shoulders engage a little bit, or maybe I'm leaning in if I'm concerned. Anyway, with facial masking, a lot of times, same, same idea. I'm excited or I'm upset and you really can't read it on my face or, hey, that was a funny joke, Stephen, the one about the conductors, A+. plus. Uh, I might need you to tell me, hey, that was funny. Two other things that happen sometimes, but not as frequently, are hurried speech, or if you've ever heard of the term festination, it's, it's the same idea. Festination is just kind of a fancy, it's actually a Latin word, uh, just means hurrying. Um, so you, you might see people do it with their, their feet, right? Same thing with their speech. And it comes across almost a little bit manic. So maybe we're having a conversation, and I hear you trying to get all your words out before, and, and I'll, they're really jumbled and I can't understand because you're going too fast. Even doing that kind of gives me a little bit of anxiety. So for the listener, it can, it can be hard to understand what you're trying to say. And last is disfluency or stutter. Uh, again, pretty uncommon, but we still do see it sometimes. And although I just described the symptoms, I think it's also important that we talk about what that leads to, right? Um, if you have an issue with your voice, you're gonna be a lot more isolated. Um, maybe it leads to the depression or exacerbates depression that you're already experiencing. Uh, we know that that's something that's positively correlated with Parkinson's. And really what it boils down to is a loss of connection, right? With your, with your peer group, with your family, uh, whoever that is that, that you spend most of your time with. So next up, we're gonna talk about the, the options out there, okay? So um, before I get into the like, specifics about each one, I want to talk about some common features. So for most of these options I'm going to describe in any of the, the therapy protocols that you're going to do, they're going to work on your loudness, which is sometimes called your intensity, uh, the actual decibels at which you're speaking. So whether it's sustained phonation, which is just saying, ah, uh, or uh, maybe work on some volume control or pitch control. Also work on your breath support, right? Like we talked about, that's the fuel of your speech. So whenever I'm running a Friday class, for instance, I always harp on posture. One, because mine's not very good. And two, because that if you have a poor posture, you're not gonna have very good breath support. And the last common feature you see in all these is, is visual feedback. So for some people that might be uh, reading the, uh, a decibel meter, a decibel meter just measures how loudly you're talking. So uh, reading a decibel meter and maybe you've been told it needs to stay over 72, 76. Um, so you're making sure that you are speaking at a volume that registers louder. Or if you're sitting across from a speech therapist, as you're getting softer, they might just be giving you some very obvious visual cues, you know, louder, louder, things like that. Um, again, to correct for that sensory cut that we, we described, right? To, to give you that feedback loop um, so that you can recalibrate, hey, what is a normal speaking volume? And, and, and more importantly, what is my new normal of effort to achieve a normal speaking volume, right? Because 
a lot of times with Parkinson's, you don't notice that you're talking more quietly because you feel like you're putting forth the same effort, but because of that reduction in dopamine, you actually need to really increase the level of effort to send that same signal through. Okay, so first on the list is something that I hope um, you all on this call have heard of, which is LSVT. Uh, it says here LSVT Global. Uh, it stands for Lee Silverman Voice Treatment. Uh, and the, the speech therapy part of this is at, called LSVT Loud. Um, it's a four-week program where they meet four times a week for four weeks in one-hour sessions. So that's 16 hours total. They, do it, they offer in-person or telehealth. Um, it is by far the most researched approach. So this is a, a proprietary speech therapy protocol, okay? Me as a speech therapist, I would need to go get certified in LSVT to say that, hey, I do LSVT treatment with people with Parkinson's. They, offer, they also offer a, a physical therapy component, which is called LSVT Big. Uh, anyway, this one, again, is has an extremely robust body of research behind it. It's pretty awesome. Um, their differentiators are things like that they have been able to show really good outcomes, not even just immediately after their four-week program, but even for six months after. Begins to wane, of course, um, even at two years. Um, but even at two years, they show that there is still some, some carryover there. And I've also, for all of these, everybody, I've created a little QR code for you. If that's something you're interested in, what you can do is you could pull out your phone, pull up your camera and hover it over the QR code and it will take you to that website. So this website, uh, or this QR code is associated with the finding a clinician. So they on LSBT's website, you can search for um, LSBT certified clinicians in a 10 mile radius, 25 mile radius. Um, and that's true for their PT as well, all right? The next one I want to talk about is, is called Speak Out from a group called Parkinson Voice Project. They're based out of a, a suburb of Dallas, Texas called Richardson. And they also have a proprietary voice protocol for people with Parkinson's. It's also a four-week program. They offer a little bit more flexibility compared to LSVT in terms of, of, of frequency. Um, they offer in-person telehealth. Their differentiator is that they also have something called a loud crowd. And um, I, I'm not positive what the requirement is for loud crowd, but I do know that after you graduate from their four-week program, um, if you are able to, they encourage you to join a loud crowd, I think once a month, which is just a group voice therapy class. Um, they have different singing things. Uh, they also, off, they, they have a, an actual physical clinic in, in Richardson, Texas. Next up is Get Loud, Stay Loud. So Get Loud, Stay Loud, uh, as opposed to LSVT Loud and Speak Out, uh, LS, uh, excuse me, Get Loud, Stay Loud isn't its own uh, therapy protocol, uh, but rather it's an, an online maintenance program. So it's sort of like a class you sign up for virtually. Um, Sarah Odd is a speech therapist out of, well, originally from Canada, and she's the one that runs it. She has a variety of clinicians um, she herself is LSVT certified and speak out certified. Um, she has something every single day for her community members. I think it's a subscription basis, but they also offer a month, a free trial. So I really encourage people, especially if you've already completed LSVT or speak out, get loud, stay loud is a wonderful way to help you maintain those gains, right? Uh, something that frequently happens is when I was working in a hospital, this would happen to me. Uh, somebody would come in for therapy, they would do awesome. And then nine or 12 months later, they'd come back in for therapy. I don't wanna say at, at, at ground zero, but uh, definitely closer to there before than there after, if that makes sense. So things like Get Loud, Stay Loud, things like my app, Loud and Clear, are really meant to prolong the effects of, of these awesome treatments. There's a, a QR code for Get Loud, Stay Loud, uh, it'll, it'll take you right to their website. I'll, I'll leave that up for a little bit while I tell you a fun fact about Sarah is that she now lives in Mexico. Uh, and I think she has, oh, I should mention also, she has a, an OT that she works with too. So not only are there voice therapy options or uh, voice maintenance options, but also OT options for people with Parkinson's, which is pretty cool. Next one I want to talk about is called Speech Vibe. And Speech Vibe is the 
least like the others of, of all of these. Um, so Speech5, as opposed to being a voice therapy protocol, it's actually a wearable in-ear device. It looks similar to a, a, a pretty discreet hearing aid, and uh, but it's not a hearing aid. What it actually does is, you know, you might pop it in if you're going out to a restaurant or something like that. Uh, it draws on something called the Lombard effect, which is something that everybody experiences. Uh, if I were, say, uh, outside of this meeting room, in a little bit noisy area at my office, it's louder. And if I'm having a conversation with somebody, I naturally raise my intensity, i raise my volume without consciously putting forth effort. Because when, when it's a noisy background, we just raise our, our level of speech. And that's called the Lombard effect. So with Speech 5, put it in your ear and it plays a little bit of a background noise, almost like there's a little party going on in your ear so that you are naturally raising your vocal intensity. Uh, there is no onboarding required. That's, that's one of their big differentiators is that you can pretty much just put it in and go. Uh, and they recently got approved by Medicare, which is pretty awesome. Good for them. Um, they are, uh, the, the guy's name is Steve Mogensen and he is based out of Florida and, and he's great. Um, I've had a couple conversations with him um, if you care to learn more about it, you could scan that QR code. I'm going to move forward. Ah, uh, loud and clear. So this is the app that I made. Uh, it is a voice fitness app for people with Parkinson's. Here's like what some of the screenshots look like. And this is actually the, like the presence you'll see in the app store. Um, but loud and clear is a voice fitness app. Uh, and it's meant, again, like I mentioned already, as a supplement to voice therapy, not as a standalone replacement for voice therapy. It's meant to give you something that you can keep in your pocket to do your, your voice exercises whenever it's most convenient for you. So as opposed to traditional voice therapy, where you go and sit across from a therapist and they pull out a microphone, maybe it looks like this, and sit it across from you and, and hand you a worksheet. Um, this just puts all of that into your phone. So it, it's using the microphone in your phone to give you to display, hey, how loudly are you talking? Do you just need to be louder, softer, whatever? Uh, there, there's a, a bunch of different warm ups in there, a bunch of different exercises. There's new content every day. You can earn badges, that sort of thing. Here's a couple of screenshots. Uh, there on the on the right one, you can see what the what the voice meter looks like. Uh, if you have a, an Android, you can hover over the QR code on the left. Android is like. Google Pixel or Samsung, or does, I think Motorola still exists. And if you have an iPhone, you could hover over the one on the right and it would take you straight to a download link. You could also go to loudandclear.io to download. Oh, and if you wanted to join our Friday voice classes, that's something I offer. Um, it's, it's actually kind of similar to what Sarah does, uh, but you know, Sarah's doing it every day. I just have a Friday only. 11 o'clock central time, noon Eastern time, 5 p.m. UK time. We have a lot of UK people that join us. Um, anyway, so feel free to, to sign up there. You could also sign up at uh, loudandclear.io. Okay, so that covers voice, all the voice therapy options. What I wanna touch on, and, and, and really the next three substrates I'm gonna talk about could each be an entire and, and are, could be an entire presentation of themselves. So I'm, I'm gonna do a kind of a high level on some of this stuff, but other things that affect people with Parkinson's that you should talk to a speech therapist about. Memory. So I think part of the difficulty here is we all forget things sometimes, right? Uh, is a little blip in, in your memory is that a normal part of aging? Was that uh, something that would be kind of typical for you to forget? Or is it something that could indicate some mild cognitive impairment, right? Um, we know that people with Parkinson's at, at different times in their disease progression, experiencing cognitive impairment, usually mild, uh, is a very real possibility. So these are, these are things to look out for that, that could indicate that you have uh, some sort of cognition problem. So um, are, you, are you a little bit more forgetful than usual? How's your attention? Is your attention uh, is waning a little bit? Can you 
whether it's watching TV, reading books, talking to your partner, whatever, uh, are you able to attend? Uh, <laughs> and I, and you know, I bet I am kind of, I'm talking to a biased audience here because I bet you guys have great attention that you would actually sign up and be here. So um, you just go back to your support groups and let them know about this, okay? But for real, keep uh, attention. If you notice that you're having trouble paying attention, uh, keep that in mind as, okay, is this something I want? To, I need to be on the lookout for? Problem solving. Um, somebody asked me the other day what a good example of problem solving would be. And off the cuff, I came up with, uh, pretend that you like to cook, your, your, whether bake, cook, you're good in the kitchen, and you go to a double a recipe, and all of a sudden that's a lot trickier than it used to be for you. Um, what's two times three quarters of a cup? Uh, things like that giving you more trouble than, than they used to. You know, all of this is kind of compared to what was normal, right? Uh, another thing to, that you could look out for. And last is a, a, that I'm going to talk about for cognition is executive function. So executive function is your ability to coordinate all these other functions together, your brain's ability to coordinate these functions together. So uh, a, a good example might be something like calling to calling your bank to contest a charge or if you're in your doctor's office and they're asking do you have any more questions for me and you're trying to pull out your phone because you know that you wrote them down because you knew you would forget these questions if you didn't have them um well do i remember where i wrote them down um do i have the attention to to still be engaged in this conversation um uh, another example could be maybe uh, you're driving to a new place, right? And you put the, I don't think anybody here would print directions, but maybe, but uh, maybe you, you put the address in your phone. That is a great example of executive function where you're having to pay attention to the road while you're driving. Uh, remember, uh, wait, was, did they say a hundred, a hundred yards? Did they say half a mile uh, problem solving? Wait, did I just go a quarter mile, but judging this distance, all of that sort of thing is, is executive function is, is pretty high level coordination of these other mental tasks. Okay. I also want to briefly touch on language. So this one, uh, some SLPs might string me up for how uh, simplified a version of, of language problems you're going to, we're going to talk about, but I'm, I'm just going to very broadly break them into two categories. First is we're going to talk about, uh, language output or word finding. Again, we all sometimes, regardless of your age, we all sometimes have trouble coming up with the word that we mean to say, right? Are you noticing that happening more frequently? Or is your, is your spouse or uh, is, your, is your kid noticing that happening more frequently? Um, so word finding is your ability to get the message out in what was a typical fashion for you, okay? And then that's communication out. The other is communication in, understanding messages. So that is a big part of, of language. And, and I, I probably should have mentioned, I, for speech therapists, we consider language and, and voice or speech as, as separate issues. So, so language is, is what's going on in the brain um, versus speech is more what's going on on a, on a muscular level. So understanding messages. I'm not talking about losing your hearing, right? Uh, this is more like, I understood all the words that you said, but attaching meaning to them, stitching them together, there's some sort of break here. That's the sort of thing that I'm talking about looking out for, okay? So we've talked about voice, cognition, language, and the last one I wanna talk about here is swallowing problems. This one was difficult for me to, to really pare down, to, to just mention it for a couple minutes. Uh, because this one I think is really, really vital. And uh, it's not even my area of specialty. My area of specialty is more the, the previous three, but it's something that I am vigilant to tell my clients, hey, if you're experiencing any swallow issues, or if you could be experiencing any swallow issues, or if your wife or husband is telling you that you're experiencing swallow issues, please do not ignore it, okay? So um, we break down your swallow into three phases. The oral phase, which is what happens inside your mouth um, with your teeth, your tongue, your cheeks, your soft palate, things like that. Uh, and then you push the food down to the pharyngeal phase, right? And then the esophageal phase. The esophageal phase is mostly involuntary and that's not really anything that a speech therapist can do. Uh, 
can can treat but oral phase and pharyngeal phase we have a lot of tools for treating those okay so uh, let me give you a couple signs and symptoms to look out for um, when you hear me talk about swallow problems maybe you're thinking well, what does that mean things to look out for a lot of coughing especially when you're eating or drinking a lot of throat clearing uh, reduced saliva control that can be either at the back of the throat or at the front of the mouth even if you have a runny nose or eyes when you're eating if you're experiencing weight loss this is an, an exhaustive list, but it is kind of, uh, it's going to capture a lot of pretty typical signs and symptoms, but then you can also have swallowing difficulties without exhibiting any of these signs, which is a little bit alarming um, from a speech therapy point of view. These swallow issues can lead to things like malnutrition and dehydration, uh, so, you know, we're talking about here about therapy. Well, if you don't have enough energy, how are you going to do your therapy? How are you going to make it to the end of the day if you don't have enough energy? Uh, how are you going to have good vocal exercises if you're dehydrated? Just reading the word dehydration makes me need to take a sip. Decreased quality of life. So food is really related. It's really intertwined with um, togetherness being social, right? Uh, maybe you love going out to get steaks every Sunday or something like that. If you're not able to handle that anymore, you might withdraw from those awesome situations with your friends. Aspiration pneumonia. So to me, the biggest concern of, of these three is, is aspiration pneumonia. And that's because aspiration pneumonia is, is the leading cause of death in Parkinson's. Um, I don't say that to be dark. Uh, I said that just to make sure that you are armed with the knowledge of why aspiration pneumonia and, and aspiration pneumonia means pneumonia, which is like a, an infection in your lungs caused by uh, foreign contaminates getting in there and they can kind of rot. Uh, and anyway, that can, like, even if it doesn't kill you, it puts you in the hospital. Trust me that you don't want to talk about decreased quality of life. Um, passing away, I would, I would say is a decreased quality of life. All right. The bottom line here is, is just don't wait. So for all of these things, what I really want to drive home, whether we're talking about voice or cognition, thinking, language or swallow, just don't wait. All right. For, for a lot of these, a, a baseline is a great idea. So even if you're like, I maybe, maybe, or my wife says, maybe, maybe I have an issue here. There's no point in putting it off. You can go to your doctor, whether your primary care or your movement disorder specialist, or if some of you just have a general neurologist, that's great too. Uh, and you can get a prescription for to see a speech therapist. Again, all four of those is something a speech therapist can, can address, okay? But please do not wait. So recap, SLPs treat your voice, cognition, language, and swallowing, okay? Oh, I wanted to throw in this word of caution. Uh, again, when I was still working in the hospitals, I would see this happen sometimes. What you need treated may affect the way your doctor needs to write this script. So sometimes somebody would come in for say voice treatment and I would get it, I would receive a script that said, would say like cognitive eval and treat. Well, unfortunately I can't give them a voice eval if the script says to treat their cognition. Uh, so whether it's, it's, I, and I think at all facilities, I don't know, but at least at our facility, a doctor could put more than one thing on the same script, right? Uh, cog and voice and swallow eval and treat, okay? Uh, something like that, that gives us the right as clinicians to execute on that, okay? So it, it's, it, it's kind of like a, a small detail here, but it could really gum up your getting help in a timely fashion. Again, the earlier, the better. This is a, uh, this is a man who is, Scheduling in a timely fashion, okay? So I wanna go back to that question of, of, of why. Um, why do we do therapy? Um, specifically here, I'm talking about for, for different speech therapies. I, I've talked briefly on, on what we do for voice therapy uh, and said that we do do therapy for cog and language and, and swallow, but, but why? Uh, certainly you'll be able to say it all loudly. You'll be able to count loudly. You can even read aloud really 
really well. But guys, that is, that is not the point of therapy. The point of therapy is to stay connected. All right. So hopefully one of these images speaks to you, but this is about staying connected. Th that's the why. Okay. The, the seeing us, seeing your therapist, that's just the how that's, that's the means to which. Okay. But it's really all about staying connected, um, having your, your, your social group, having your, your support network, um, being able to communicate with your loved ones around, around the holidays or around the house or, or all of that great stuff that talk about quality of life. Um, that's ex exactly the sort of thing that, that we're talking about. So the key takeaways here, um, there, a treatment gap exists. The majority of people who have Parkinson's, a, a Parkinson's diagnosis will experience a voice disorder at some point along the progression of their disease. Um, there's really effective treatment for your voice if you have Parkinson's. We talked about uh, LSBT Loud. We talked about Speak Out. We talked about um, Sarah Odds Get Loud, Stay Loud, um, which offers daily classes, right? Straight to your computer. Um, we talked about Speech Vive, wearable in-ear device um, that kind of instantly can help with your speech. Talked about my app, Loud and Clear, how you can be practicing, you know, wake up in the morning and, and practice with that. Uh, and by the way, if you do download that, I would love to know what you think of it, okay? That, that, that the way that we iterate and get better so that we can better serve the community is when you talk to me about it and I can ask you questions and we, it's really me working with you to discover what, sh what should be improved. Um, SLPs also treat cognition and language, and I should have put swallowing on there as well, okay? Uh, and that sooner equals better. Across the board, e I might as well mention that uh, I, I was talking to a, a, a researching speech language pathologist about this the other day, and we were, the research shows, and we were also saying anecdotally, we've, we've witnessed that, that part of the difficulty here is that people with Parkinson's oftentimes don't recognize what that, that something is happening, right? You might um, shoot in the hospital all the time. I would hear somebody would come in for voice treatment and I'd say, and I'd say oh, okay, tell me about the history of this. You know, we're doing some background and say, oh, well, first I made my wife go get her hearing checked. And once that came back unremarkably, then I decided I'd come in for voice treatment, right? Um, so I, I just say that to highlight a lot of times because it's slowly progressing, because there is this break in kind of that sensory feedback. Uh, maybe maybe a person is experiencing some of those mild cognitive changes and, and it's harder for them to recognize. Uh, so all that to say, uh, because it can be hard to recognize, lean on your support system, don't wait, okay? Um, thank you. This is, by the way, this is the picture that I see at the top of my stairs right out there every day that I come to work. Our man who floated like a butterfly and stung like a bee. Uh, I put my contact info down there, stephendarrow at gmail.com. I just put my phone number on there so that uh, if anybody ever wants to reach out, uh, if you have any questions, a lot of time, probably at least once a week, I get a call, somebody lives, in inland Florida is where this happened most recently and says, Hey, I'm having trouble finding a speech therapist, or I'm having trouble finding PT options. Can you help me understand what are my alternatives uh, where I live? And so anyway, if you have any of these types of questions, please just reach out. We can, we can get together about that and, and figure that out together. Okay. There's my three sweet boys. I want to leave you with that. And that is, I think, yeah, that's it. I wanted to make sure that I had time for questions. Questions. Um, first, though, I do want to address, because as a social worker, I'm always very cognitive of the fact that, um, cognizant, excuse me, um, about what Medicare is going to pay for. And so I never actually really thought about the script from your standpoint. Mm -hmm. I always just thought we really want that script to be specific because you might have a swallowing problem now, but down the road, it becomes a cognition problem or something else. So aside from just telling you what the doctor really wants to look at, 
we never just want the script to say speech therapy, evaluate and treat. We really do want it to say, you know, swallowing difficulties. And, and yes, there can be more than one thing, but because things can be different, um, you know, you, you just don't want it to Medicare to be like, well, you just had speech therapy. Right. And it's, yeah. And so yeah. when you said that, I was like, oh. <laughs> that, that's a great point. Yeah. So uh, when I talk about making sure that you're, you're covered, that's not to say be overly general because of exactly what Eden is saying. You still need to be specific for Medicare to, to make sure that Medicare is going to cover you, um, but just be specific in multiple ways, right? Um, whether it's voice or swallow or a lot of times, for whatever reason, uh, sometimes like cog and language, they do squish together, which whatever, I'm happy with that. Um, uh, we, we would get reimbursed there. So, so that was fine. But thank you for bringing that up, Eden. Yeah, sure. I have a couple of questions. Um, one of the questions, which aside from Parkinson's disease, having a paralyzed vocal cord, which a lot of people have because they had um, surgery for the back of the neck, they go in through the throat. And is this something loud and clear would help with? Because like, it's not just the Parkinson's, there's the paralyzed vocal cords, which I know several people have because of that surgery. Sure, that, that, that's a great question. Um, it's not, Loud and clear wouldn't be contraindicated, or, or in other words, um, you couldn't not do loud and clear because of a, of a paralyzed vocal cord. Um, however, it's not going to give you like a better outcome. Uh, the, the best outcome for you would be to, to see a speech language pathologist um, because they can go over what are called compensatory techniques on things like maybe turning your head to the affected side, uh, sometimes even like applying pressure. Um, and it can also depend on um, which way the vocal cord is paralyzed. Sometimes, you know, it's paralyzed open. Sometimes it's paralyzed like uh, where it approximates the, the middle. And uh, it's the sort of thing that is, it's like a compounding factor that you would really want specialized care for. You, you wouldn't want to just do, find a protocol and, and, and go out on your own to do it. Another good question we had, um, it's known that speech problems can become a problem as an undesirable side effect of DBS. Is this something that can be corrected by the therapies you discussed? Because obviously this also, you probably see this a lot with Parkinson's patients who've just had DBS. Sure. Um, yes, definitely is, is the short answer. Um, the longer answer is that different medical device groups are coming out with different research that some affect your speech, some versions of the medical, uh, of, a, of a DBS affect your speech and some don't. Uh, some even might suggest that they improve it. And maybe that's true. Uh, yes, you could, you could definitely do speech therapy for that. Um, same thing, just search for one of these if you wanted, if you were looking for a, a speech therapist one-on-one, -on -one, you would definitely want to look for somebody that was certified in either LSVT loud or in speak out. Uh, and again, now that they offer those virtual options, the, the, it's really expanded the network, which, which I'm, I'm pleased with. I, I think that's awesome. Um, but DBS certainly doesn't uh, preclude you from doing speech therapy. Curry keeps raising the hand. Do you have a question? Did you want to put it in the chat or did you want to come off mute or was this just a mistake? You're on mute right now, Sue. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I, I took the uh, LSBT about uh, five years ago. And um, since then, my voice, so I hear from various people, it's got a little faint. So, um, but I think you might have answered my questions just before I, I asked you, because you said, I was wondering what would be best. What I did was, because there wasn't anybody in my town that does the LSVT or the Speak Out, um, I went to a choir director and she's trying to build up my, my chest to be able to sing and, and to, for my voice to get better. 
So um, what, what is the best approach? Is strengthening the, the torso important at all? Um, uh, or should I go and try to find the LSVT and the speak out? Sure, good question. Um, you sound pretty good, Miss Curry. So uh, I, I hope you're not too hard on yourself. Uh, and congrats on on doing the LSVT. So I, I think there's a couple questions in there. First, uh, yeah, torso control very very related to to posture, which is very connected to your your breath support. That's a big deal, right? Um, being able to have uh, adequate breath support as you're speaking, make sure that you're heard all the way to the end of your sentence, right? Which is very important. Um, you, because you've taken LSBT, that does not disqualify you from taking it again. Uh, most, most insurances, in my experience, will pay for it about every year. Um, now, do you want to do it every year? I don't know. Uh, but things like, like my app, uh, get uh, loud and clear or get loud, stay loud, they're, they're meant to bridge that, that in between so that to, to give you uh, really sustained improvement. Uh, and so, if you're asking, like, if you were, if you were my mom, um, I would, I would first try and find either an LSBT or a speak out clinician in the area. Um, and, and if that wasn't an option, then I would, I would look into, to some of the other alternatives that I mentioned. Um, and real quick, I'll, I'll address this. I'll, I'll say this, even though it wasn't explicitly asked. Um, some people ask about, can, well, can I repeat? If your whoever your SLP is is taking really is, is documenting really well, uh, then what they should be able to do is you know say you came in at this level, you left at this level, you know after four weeks, if you come back in and you're down here, and they can demonstrate that you're stimulable, or in other words that there's something that as we can do therapeutically to improve your voice, then we can usually justify um, getting getting more insurance coverage. I've heard that that some insurances won't do it within the same year, but uh, I've I've also heard that annually is, is a pretty safe bet. Talk a little bit about because you talked about um, you gave the good example of the inflection about how it's really hard when someone's just very monotone and they're as opposed to like great job, Stephen. This was a good presentation. And you can see like, oh, this person's happy. And because I do, I feel like that's a huge issue with Parkinson's is the social isolation because of the mask. And, mm -hmm. you know, you don't realize how this person is really feeling. Could you maybe talk a little bit more about that? Sure. I mean, the majority of communication is nonverbal, right? So it, we don't want to neglect uh, not just, hey, are the actual words coming out audibly, um, but also are we, uh, do, do we have our personality, right? Our, our voice is part of our personality. We, our personality is in our voice. Um, there's research that, that connects voice therapy um, to, to overall better facial expression. Uh, so yet another reason that I, in a very biased way, want to encourage you guys to be doing voice therapy if you, if you haven't considered it before. Um, but I completely agree with you, Eden, that it ties in very tightly with the, the social connectedness, right? Uh, again, I think the point of therapy is to stay connected. Very important part of that is, is not only the personality inside your voice, intonation, prosody, melody, whatever you like to call it, and, and also wearing that on your face. He had stated that he's like, I can do all these things individually, but I can't remember to do them just before I speak. So I don't really remember to like over articulate and breathe deep and, you know, sure. try not to talk like a robot. <laughs> sure. Okay. So, so I, I think it's, I think it's LSBT, um, but, but some of their research has shown that what, what they don't do. So, so there's really like six or eight things that I could cue you to do that, that need improvement if you have a voice disorder from Parkinson's. Uh, LSVT has shown that if you just cue someone to speak more loudly, you naturally over-articulate. So if I raise my voice without even thinking about it, my tongue is moving a little bit bigger, a little bit more precisely, same with my lips. Um, so 
and that carries over to a couple other substrates. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, one of the things, one of the tenets for uh, LSVT clinicians is that they won't over cue. They won't cue you on several different things. They'll just cue you on that loudness. And as your loudness gets better and um, you're able to sustain that uh, more faithfully, then they might touch on some of the other things. And, oh, oh, and by the way, don't, don't forget to kind of hold, hold your shoulders back, sit, sit nice and upright, which, which honestly, I, I need reminders of that too. Um, so that is, that, that's kind of how, how LSVT uh, addresses that. Um, to go a teeny bit deeper, I, I call that the, the carryover piece. So I, I, think of, uh, I think of the warmups, which are different, like, different ways to say ah, um, maybe, maybe counting stuff like that as, as recalibrating, as saying, hey, I can't put forth this much effort to get this much output. I need to really, because I'm, I'm here now, I need to increase it, uh, the effort to increase my output. Well, great. But again, the goal is not to say, ah, the goal is that you're out to eat with your loved ones and they can hear you across the table. So that's the carryover piece. Um, something that that Speak Out has emphasized well, in my, in my opinion, is they uh, bring in some of this some of this thinking while you're speaking. Uh, and this is something that we'll, we do in my, my Friday classes too, it, similar but different, um, that not only do you, you do your vocal warmups, but hey, we also, practice that new voice while we're having to think about what we're saying, while we're um, uh, completing a pair or saying the same question, the, the same sentence as a question and as a statement. It's time to go. It's time to go. Um, things like that. Uh, yeah, hopefully, I, hopefully that answered the question. I'm, I'm sorry if I droned on a little bit. Not at all. And also, like one thing that comes up a lot is the cognition you talked about. How, how could you help with that when it's almost like, like I've heard people say, I just, the word is on the tip of my tongue and I can't, or it's like, I, I can picture this person. I can't mm -hmm. say their name. So then nobody knows who I'm talking about. Cause I'm like, you know, the guy with the hair and the eyes and you're like, you need every guy that has <laughs> hair and eyes. Um, and it kind of kills the conversation a little bit because it's like, it's on the, and then it, cause then it also becomes a frustration thing. But it's like, sure. why can't I talk? Why can't I bring these words to the forefront? Yeah. So, so what you're saying is is why I kind of got into speech therapy in the first place before I was even in the Parkinson community is because I love games. And that is sort of what it's like when you go to see a speech therapist um, for for either language or for cognition. Uh, it's a, It can be a lot of different games where you're you're practicing um different different memory skills or or different language skills right if you've ever played categories or something like that where you're having to you know name a bunch of different things and start with the letter t right items in this room uh, a table uh you know cities toronto things like that and uh, it's it's anyway so if you hate games that part might be kind of hard and and i have had clients like i don't want to do this I'm like well <laughs> Okay, uh, I'll make it as dry as possible, and then you won't think that I'm talking down to you. But I'm really—I was never talking down to you. I'm, this is this is kind of part part of who I am. But yeah, it, it's a lot of different games that that just help you practice that, so that um, uh, not only can you actually get better at the at, at memory or or attention or problem solving or, or word finding, um, but that you can get more comfortable in a situation using techniques where oh, forgot your name. Oh yeah, uh, Tom. Because I I remember that you, Tom, like Tom and Jerry, got it. The, the, things like that, where where you practice, uh, you don't you don't only improve, but you also uh, improve that that skill. But you also improve your ab ability to compensate for that. Can you tell us just a little bit more about the app? If people get the app, what can they expect? What 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 is it like? What is is it more sure. is it games? Is it, you know, tell us a little bit more about that. Sure. Um, it, so you, you would, you would see the, the typical, so it onboards you, right? You go through a couple of, you download it, you go through a couple exercises, but then what you would see uh, on a daily basis are, are the warmups, which is saying, ah, uh, or uh, practicing different loudness, uh, different intensity levels, practicing different volume, uh, <laughs> different pitch levels. Uh, and then there's a, an exercises, section that's separate that and that's the one that's um 
you know, reading tongue twisters or uh, naming items or answering trivia questions, things like that. And then, there, then there's always a, a little homework prompt that you, it doesn't actually record you on, but it gives you ideas like, hey, uh, one of my favorite, my actual favorite one is uh, call a restaurant down the street and ask, you know, what time do you close and do you deliver? Um, because you know what? Restaurants are noisy. Um, did the person on the other end hear you? They can't see your face. Imagine if you're trying to understand what I was saying without seeing my mouth. It's way harder, right? Um, so th that's a, a day in the life of the app. Yeah, because I just I know people like to see, like to know what they're getting into, like to understand oh, and everything. Sure, sure. That, that that makes a ton of sense. Yeah, and uh, there, there's also we we've built out a way that you can. Starting on, on day two, you can record a baseline. So you'll record yourself reading or record yourself saying, ah, uh, and then after you've done the app, I think it's, I think it's after you've done 10 sessions, you can re-record and, and see how you compare. Have some, have some growth and see how you're doing. And Hopefully, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise it would not be as fun. <laughs> sure, and, and, and really, I mean, we, <laughs> It like, like in retrospect, it's like, yeah, of course, but it was talking to people just like the people that are on this call. So um, that's why, you know, that's why I say it's kind of a, a collaboration or a co-creation uh, is because I, this is for you guys. I am trying to serve you guys. I just want to be a part of, of your journey and, and helping you on the way, being part of your support team. So much for giving us your time today. This has been incredible. Oh, sure. So it's certainly my grateful. pleasure. We're so grateful you joined us today. And um, as always, we have our um, wave of our tradition. <laughs> Linda's already beat me to it. <laughs> our wave of gratitude. And I'm just so grateful that you're with us today. So thank you, everybody, for sharing your Wednesday afternoon with us. And See you soon. Bye, guys. Thank you very much.